So far in the Decarbonize series on Fusion, we've explored tokamaks, reverse field configuration, and lasers pounding a target of heavy hydrogen to create a miniature H-bomb. What else is there? Believe it or not, and you should believe this, today we're going to explore one of the first ideas tested to peacefully harness nuclear fusion, the Z-pinch. This is the video for everyone who has stuck out their right thumb while curling their fingers into a fist when learning about the right hand rule. But don't worry, there'll be no vector math during this video. That will be left as an exercise for the viewer. And if you're not sure what fusion is, I recommend you start with the first video in this series. In 1905, a lightning strike in New South Wales, Australia, hit a hollow rod and crushed the thing. Luckily, the plant manager thought this was interesting and contacted two scientists from the University of Sydney who described how a current running through a conductor created a squeezing force, which in this case destroyed the lightning rod. The force is called a Z-pinch, where Z describes the up and down direction in a grid system. You can think of this force using the right-hand rule. The current is running along your thumb generating the magnetic fields of your other fingers. The greater the current, the stronger the magnetic fields and the compressional force. In the case of the lightning rod, the forces were strong enough to overcome the strength of the metal. After fusion was used to create the hydrogen bomb, scientists began to wonder about ways to harness this energy in ways that were less destructive. And it occurred to some that the compressional forces of the Z-pinch might do the trick. Rather than running the current down a hollow pipe, it would run through a plasma made of heavy hydrogen. If the current was high enough, you should be able to compress the deuterium and tritium enough for it to reach temperatures and densities high enough to fuse the hydrogen into helium, releasing energy. But plasmas are infamously persnickety. Early experiments were stymied by the kink instability. What happened was, as the plasma compressed, bubbles broke away, like when you squeeze a balloon and bits escape between your fingers. The Zeta experiment in the early 1950s tried a stabilized pinch approach with external magnets that initially looked promising, but it was soon realized that it was a mirage. The plasma instabilities kept weakening the compression, so the idea was dropped and tokamaks became fashionable. But the idea didn't completely die, and Dr. Yuri Shumlak at the University of Washington had the idea of shear flow stabilization. Rather than just a single current running down the center of the plasma, a cylinder of currents, which are moving at different speeds as you move away from the center, would prevent the bubbles of plasma leaking away. Shumlak likens it to cars on a freeway. You have a lane that's moving particularly slowly next to a lane that's moving very quickly, it's hard to change lanes, he explains. But if all the cars are traveling at about the same speed, then it's easy to change lanes. The instabilities are cars changing lanes towards the outside, removing energy from the center where they're trying to create the conditions for fusion. After about 20 years of work at the University of Washington, Dr. Schumlach co-founded Zap Energy in 2017, taking the Fusion Z-Pinch experiment, or FUSE, with him. To date, Zap Energy has raised about $324 million in private investments. They are now operating the FUSE Q experiment, which is designed to reach a peak current of one mega amp. A pulse that strong should be able to reach a Q of one, where the energy input into the plasma by the electrical current equals the energy generated through fusion. This is a key milestone towards commercial fusion that so far has only been reached by the National Ignition Facility at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. And their approach is not suitable for a commercial power plant. No significant results from FUSE-Q have been shared since first plasma was reached in June of 2022. One interesting element of their design is that they have a liquid metal wall, similar to the waterfall of Eximer, but theirs is more like an overflowing pool than a waterfall. There's still a wall, but the liquid metal is the first interface somewhat protecting that wall. 
and it's made of metal and forms the cathode of the circuit for each zap. So it's there for electrical as well as thermal and neutron absorbing reasons. The liquid metal will be doped with lithium and beryllium to breed tritium fuel that they need. They started operations of the Century prototype, which is focused on things like repetition rate and be able to remain operational for longer durations. Things that aren't needed for a proof of concept, but are for a power plant. The Century platform it was recently tested, producing a zap of 100 kiloamps every 10 seconds for three hours, which is impressive. For a commercial fusion plant, they'll need to zap more than 10 times stronger, but it's encouraging to see them working not just on getting fusion to work, but tackling the issues needed for a power plant. As an interesting side note, I wrote a series of short stories about 15 years ago called A Dinosaur's Last Roar, which is available on Medium, and I'll put a link below. One of the first stories was about a spin-off from the University of Washington developing a compact fusion power plant called Second Sun Energy. Their approach was to run currents through a plasma of heavy hydrogen to generate regions of high density and temperature. There are many elements of Zap's story that reminds me of my short story, so they've always had a special place in my physicist slash storyteller heart. One of the things I appreciate about ZAP is their lack of absurd pronouncements of how close they are to achieving commercial fusion. No, we're picking a location for a commercial power plant before we've generated fusion, like some of their competitors. They're just continuing to work this very hard problem, though I do wish they'd share some results from their FuseQ experiment. In any case, this is a company I'll be keeping an eye on. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Since you got to the end, it probably makes sense to like and the video and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a Guinness. You can click here to see more of my videos on nuclear fusion. And please forward this video on to anyone you know who has stuck out their thumb and curled their fingers in a physics class.